Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Learn with Jason. Today on the show, we have Ryan Carniato. Thank you so much for joining us. Hi, Jason. It's awesome to be here. I'm, I'm really uh, looking forward to this. I, I'm super excited to have you on. We've we've talked a little bit on on Twitter, uh, and and the stuff you're working on is super cool. But before we talk about that, I want to talk a little bit about you. So for folks who aren't familiar with your work, you want to give us a little bit of a, a background? Yeah, I, I, I'm just a web developer. I've been, I've been at this now for quite some time, I've, over 15 years. Uh, and uh, I was just working at a startup doing my, my deal. And uh, at some point, I'm a big fan of a library. You might have heard of uh, Knockout JS. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's a bit older, but I was a huge fan. And over time, it kind of waned out. And I just started working on tooling and frameworks myself, built on the same kind of concepts as Knockout. And uh, just kind of kept to myself, worked at my startup, hoped one day we would use that project. And um, then, you know, I, before I knew it, I was building t tools and uh, frameworks that other people use. I, I, I now work at eBay. Um, sure. They hired me to work on the Marco framework, which is a, another JavaScript framework. Um, so I, I've kind of taken my hobby passion project um, to be my profession. So, I mean, nice. that, that's that's me. Yeah, that's the... And that's the dream, right? Like I, I, uh, I, I love it when you're able to find, you know, you you start out in a career, and then you you start to figure out which pieces of that career are the ones that really give you a lot of like positive value. You 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 enjoy it. You you know, it creates value for other people. It's a thing that can get you paid. So many good things like that. Um, and uh, oh my God, Chris, twenty nine months. I can't even believe I've been streaming for twenty nine months. That's wild. Uh, but yeah, so, you know, when you can make that into your job, that's, that's, that feels like the dream. That's the best possible outcome is that you can wake up and go, man, I can't believe they let me do the thing that I was doing anyways. And like, give me a paycheck for it. That's that. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I, and the thing is Marco and solid are actually different enough. There are some similarities in technology mm. bridging, but they are different enough that I get to explore even different sides of this coin. Like Marco is very on the more, I'd say like svelte side of things where it's all compiler and clean, clean terse syntax, write less code. And so it's much more on the explicit side. So I get I get to explore like all sides and I'm a big benchmarking fan. So I I, I play with like all the frameworks. It's, it's just really quite, quite fun. Yeah, 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 oh, it's, that's good. I'm, I'm very excited. So, so, uh, you work on Marco, you work on Solid, and Solid is very interesting because the way that I've seen Solid discussed, and I'm just going to give you my like passing perception of, of watching discussions and you can tell me how wrong I am. <laughs> but my my like obs observation of what people say about Solid is that it is it's reactive without a VDOM, which is is interesting. And, and like the VDOM for people who aren't super familiar, that's what makes react reactive is they they kind of build a, another copy of the the dom called the vdom the virtual dom and that gives you the ability to like mutate things without having to change the entire document um and the reason that we have that is because the perception is that the vdom makes it possible to be performant uh, because making those those transformations in the dom the argument is that that can't be performant but solid is saying that that's not actually the case and if you look at the the size of solid, it's what, 6.4 kilobytes. It's a little baby framework, um, but it's also just screaming fast. Like if you look at benchmarks in terms of what it can do, it solid is closer to just like bare metal native browser APIs than it is to other frameworks in terms of, of performance. And so none of that makes sense to me when I think about it. Cause I'm like, whoa, whoa wait, wait. Why, like, how can you do that? Because there were very good reasons that the trade-offs were made in frameworks like React and Vue and Angular to to have like that kind of VDOM and these abstractions over the browser. So, so what's different in Solid that makes that possible? Yeah, um, Solid in some ways is almost how should I put it too simple. I don't know. That's like something you don't like brag about or like. Very, I'm not saying it's easy necessarily. I'm just. I mean. The idea is it's all made of the same pieces. And, okay. and that is that Solid is built on these reactive primitives. Um, I mentioned Knockout before. Um, you might have seen MobX. Even Vue um, has these same kind of primitives. But the, the big difference in Solid compared to more of the other contemporary libraries is that 
it's those primitives that do all the rendering. There's no like virtual DOM. There's no, there's no like top down render cycle or anything like okay. that. If, if you've ever played, like done like a hello world type thing in mob X or something, you can usually just like write your, they call them observables or whatever, but you can write your, your signals, the term we use in solid, and then just write something called like create a factor and which is kind of like we actually use effect and syntax or like auto run in MobX and just have a console log something. So you like update your field and then it spits something out in the console. And th this sort of thing is like the simple example. Everyone sees that and they go, oh, it's cool. It automatically updates, automatically runs. Mm -hmm. all, all Solid is doing is applying that same idea to the DOM. Like interesting. Okay. There's there's no there's no like now we're rendering. It's just like, oh, I'm just going to you update this data. This field in the DOM is related to it. Let's just update it. It's just like an event. Okay. Um, so it's it's very small. And and it's funny because you posted that 6.4 KB, and every time I look at it, I'm like, that's so misleading. Cause we actually have tree shaking, solid actually runtime for like smaller apps, not using like suspense and transitions and all the uh, okay. fancy stuff is actually much smaller. It's more like 3.8 kilobytes oh okay so Sorry, it i i when you said misleading i was like oh it has plugins and no actually it's too big <laughs> yeah i mean it's it's much more it's it's much more in the range of uh like preact or even sometimes smaller than preact gotcha. um, okay so but i mean generally speaking it's just because every part of the render uses the same thing again so we just reuse a lot of code um, mm. essentially so it can be really small um the compiler actually does very very little and I, I think i probably need to get more like that's not something i can just explain uh on the compilation side but it, it literally just when people look at solve they're surprised at how little there is there it's just like oh this is like a, how i would have written it by hand um the way the compilation works i got gotcha. you okay cool yeah, and I'm seeing a lot of uh, a lot of folks are excited to see you on the show. A lot of first time chatters. Welcome everybody. Glad uh, some some folks are catching the show for the first time live. Welcome. I hope you're having a good time. Um, so so let's talk a little bit about the the kind of trade offs here. So um, when we're we're talking about you know we're we're keeping this close to the browser. These are these are simple APIs. What are the like? What are the upsides? We know a couple of them. It's a it's a much smaller framework, so there's a lot less to to download and, and work. So, what are some of the upsides? And then, like, do you are you trading anything for that uh, for those upsides? Yeah, I mean, this whole exercise, I, I, by that I mean designing this framework, mm -hmm. has been kind of walking that line because, as I said, what gets compiled, the base size, um, you know, the the base things that you make are, are actually pretty performant as we've seen, mm -hmm. because there, there's not much to them. But it means that um, you, we're really depending on the reactive system. So I sometimes call, use the term, there's no safety net. Um, everything, and this is kind of what was the downfall of some of the older reactive libraries like Knockout back in the day. We've learned since then, MobX has showed us how we can have glitch-free synchronous execution that's predictable. But in general, like when you create something in solid, the, like you, you're creating a real DOM node. So if you're just like re-render everything, you're actually recreating all the DOM nodes where virtual DOM kind of cushions that impact. So everything with solid um, is built much with purpose. Um, there's, you know, for handling things like lists, there's helpers um, specifically. So there's like a little bit of, and the data um, is reactive. So you're not just dealing with plain objects. You do mm -hmm. have to recognize that there is reactivity here. Right. Um, as, as I said, there's there's big upsides in terms of performance, size, and all that side. But it's something to be aware of. There's if there's patterns or paradigms that are designed um, with virtual DOM in mind, because they're just like whatever, we'll just throw it away. Um, <laughs> that doesn't really always translate to solid because like we've been forced to think in a performant manner right from the get go, just from the design. So like like routing is a perfect example. Mm -hmm. Solids always had nested routing because we needed to not redraw parent layouts to ensure that we're not doing wasteful DOM updates, right? Right. Or right now, it's like the hot thing with React. We did Remix yesterday and, and, and that thing. That's because VDOM was kind of just like, ah, whatever, it's good enough. Um, in a certain way, uh, Solid Approach doesn't give lecture to that. What's cool, though, is generally you can build good patterns around performant things, right? We're seeing mm -hmm. this in the React. Like, it's a joy to use Remix and it's nested routing. So there's no 
downside trade off of using the same patterns in solid sure. because because it's it, it's it's good to do less work. Just the VDOM will punish you less for it. It's the same kind of idea with Vue. Vue actually has reactivity like solid plus a VDOM. Right. So it's kind of it's kind of got the the whole thing and. Uh, you know, again, VDOM just is kind of like the safety net, this kind of you can't do wrong kind of thing. And gotcha. you take that away, um, you get performance and you get smaller and you get that. So, I mean, it, there is there's definitely a trade off there. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, I think yeah. The, I think the only place that I've really felt it though, I, and I, cause I always claim that you can just react to the model or anything, which is pretty much true is it's a little bit harder for things that are just innately based on diffing, um, mm. H hot module reloading. I think that's actually like the sure. only thing in, in our dev code, cause you're replacing whole files and you're replacing code on the fly. That takes a little bit more thought and consideration for something like solid, but for end user code where people are interacting, touching things, moving mm -hmm. things, pulling in table data, doing all that kind of stuff. You're not going to really feel that. And the, in fact, the granular updates and the simpler model actually aid a lot in performance. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and so, yeah, people are people are saying they want to see the code. I want to see the code. So I'm I'm ready. Let's go ahead and jump in. While I'm jumping over, I am going to remind the chat, please refrain from uh, framework bashing. We are not here to discuss which one is best. We're here to learn. So uh, just, you know, to keep it positive. No, nobody is better or worse. We're, we're just learning here. Um, so this show, like every show, is live captioned. You can find that on the homepage of learnwithjason.dev. We've got Amanda here from White Coat Captioning taking notes and are uh, taking down everything we say and making the show more accessible. We've got sponsors who make that possible. Netlify, Fauna, and Auth0 all kick in, uh, put a little money in the bucket so that we can we can afford things like captioning. So thank you very much to them. Um, we are talking to Ryan, so make sure you go and follow Ryan on the tweeters. And we're talking about SolidJS today, so you can go find out more here. All right, with that, I have no idea what I'm doing. What's what's my first step if I want to uh, if I want to do this? Well, you came to the right place. This is our website, um, and if you look, there's a tab there that says Get Started, um, which is probably a pretty good place to get started. And in fact. We have our starter template right here. There are a few different templates and there's like, we have a few different starters, but I think for this, we're just gonna start bare bones, like anyone who'd be coming in to check out Solid for this just time. So we can actually just run in the terminal the stuff that you see right here. Cause this is essentially Great. just a, a dgit on our Vite app. We use Vite in all our templates. It's super fast. It's really nice experience. And we're really stoked about it. Great. Let me uh, create a project. It's going to be called Let's Learn Solid JS. I love dgit. It's such a cool, like, what a great way to to approach this problem. Yeah. Uh, but now I need to get a knit in it. Great. All right. Let me open this thing up. Yeah. And you're probably going to need the npm install as well when you get ah, a yes. chance. Okay. So we'll npm install, and then we can just poke around in here. So, um. I got I got called out for not looking at the README, so let me start by opening the README. <laughs> um, yeah. I mean a lot of a lot of this stuff uh is mostly uh just kind of dev commands and whatnot and links to Discord and the website, just stuff. The the original person who put the template together actually used a lot of PMPM. We don't you don't need to use that, you can use Yarn or MPM or whatever. But yeah. Okay. So, yeah, because I definitely, uh, I definitely did not use PNPM. <laughs> but yeah. uh, okay, so all right, I'm looking at a few things here. I see Vite. That's always exciting. Vite is super fast. Uh, I see an index.html and this this div ID root. This looks familiar. This is what I've expected in any kind of single page app framework where you know React View whatever. This is what what you'll see. Um, and then I got a source folder. So what what's kind of my first step here? How should we we kind of get our heads around how this works? Yeah, I mean, and the first thing I want to point out, this template we chose today is just a client side routed typical kind of template you would use on that. We we have stuff for isomorphic and SSR, and it's you know still being worked on a lot. We have a okay. starter, a different starter I might mention later. But for this, um, our entry point um, is index.jsx. Uh, and this is going to look really familiar to anyone who's used mm. a Re React. 
Um, a lot of our APIs do look similar. I have a lot of respect for React. I like um, how explicit it is, and I, we've kind of borrowed that. And Solid, uh, which we, I don't think we talked about too much, is a framework uh, built on um, JSX templating, very similar to React. It's just everything else that's different. So it's pretty so familiar in terms of you know we're not learning uh, a whole bunch of new APIs. Importing an app, this looks like I'm I'm going to make a guess that this is a component, and we're importing yeah. our CSS, which that's you know I I like this pattern. You you know where it's coming from. I'm assuming this goes through all the processing and and minification and all the stuff that we want, so that we we don't have to build all those pipelines in ourselves. Um, thanks to Veet. Veet is thanks the to power. Veet. Yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're leaning hard on Veet here. It, it just makes our lives so much easier. This this is the stuff that I am um, perhaps maybe not, it's like not my, it's not the part that excites me as much. I'm so glad that other people have put in the work into the, the dev toolings. I, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, very, I'm very UX focused. I'm very concerned about end user experience and yeah. performance as it translates it. To have people creating great dev tools that work for any framework is just, it just makes life so much easier. Absolutely. And, and we're, we won't get deep into that today. So if you want a, a good deep dive on like what Vite is and why it's cool, this conversation with Sunil Pai is is one of my favorites I've had. Uh, Sunil is wonderful. And uh, we we build a little Vite project and talk a whole lot about what makes it cool and, and why that's exciting. Um, so I've got, let's see. So then this is pulling in from the app. So that's app JSX here. And this, boy, does that look nice and familiar. I, I feel like I can get right into this right away. Like nothing, it, we've even got CSS modules. You're speaking my language. This is great. Yeah. I'm happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Again, a lot of beat stuff. And the, when you run this example, mm -hmm. it should look very, very familiar. I, I, okay. I maybe this is just kind of like a play I like to do, but I love borrowing stuff from other frameworks and, and you know taking it you know unapologetically. This this example is is something that I think every React developer has probably seen it for some some point. Yeah. Okay. So. This is great. Okay, so edit, save to reload. Okay, so let's let's try. I want to make a change. If, if if you haven't if you haven't seen this, this is create create React app. Um, uh, like just I we we moved the React logo. Um, <laughs> yeah, and to be fair, um, our our as I mentioned before, the HMR there is there is some differences in the ways it works. Sure. Our HMR. Um, does need to blow out state below the change because it needs to recreate the graph to re reactive graph. So when you have nested components, like we 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 do, we can't we can't really reconcile stuff that happens like below the rooted change. So if you're changing the root component, you are going to re-render like most of the app. Uh, this is this is something I'm still kind of doing research in, as I mentioned gotcha. before. This is one of the trickier parts um, of but. not having. That's the trade-off of not having a VDOM, right? Is you can't like create two instances of it and then figure out what's changed and then like merge them back together. And and to be fair, even Svelte has an easier job at something like this without their VDOM because they're still component centric. Uh, mm. In a lot of ways, Svelte's very similar to React. I, I know no one ever says that, but <laughs> but but like they you still have behind all the compiler magic a function call that goes rerun this component. And, ah, yes. and 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 it, it, that's like I mean it might as well be called set state from a mechanical standpoint. I understand you can like do equal signs, but it, it's right. essentially solid doesn't have that. And okay. I, I mean we're going to show that in a bit more as we go. Uh, uh, what, what what that means? But yes, yeah. Okay, so I mean we've got the we've got the basics here, and I'm I'm very happy that you know this this syntax makes this feel approachable to me. So you know I I think that. A lot of times for me, what I'm always looking for is, is how do we make this feel? Uh, how do you ease the, the learning curve? And <laughs> like, if we're going to get into reactivity, which is something I don't know a lot about, like MobX is not something I have a lot of experience with, but JSX, I get that. I know how to write JSX based component files and I know how CSS modules work. And I, I've used projects that are built with Vite. So, so this learning curve makes sense to me, which I like because it means that I have smaller hills to climb uh to to get to the point where i can build something real with with this language or with this framework. 
Definitely. There, there are a couple little small differences that you're going to notice mm -hmm. right off the bat. Um, and actually, to answer a question from chat, we do support TypeScript. Solo is written completely in TypeScript. Okay. Um, so that, that that is actually a, a big thing. I chose not to use that. I find I'm not like the best TypeScript dev, and I figured I wouldn't be I wouldn't be able to guide Jason through TypeScript as well. Um, but Solid <laughs> is is all TypeScript. Um, but the other small thing is we we do try and lean towards DOM conventions more than mm. React React conventions. Just because you use JSX doesn't mean you have to use it like React does. If sure. you notice, there, it's not class name. Right. I, I like, noticed I noticed that immediately. And and you can use class name. My alias Re React is common enough that like we have to consider these sort of things. Sure. But but you know there's just like little differences. Like mm -hmm. this one always hangs up people on um, every single stream I've ever done. On change does not fire on keystroke. It fires on blur. Uh... <laughs> little things like that are gonna are gonna hit the React developer because like the, all that behavior React builds in, it's just extra layers of code you need to pull in to do behavior they defined. Whereas yeah, um, yeah. we try to keep close to the browser. Yeah. Well that's I mean that's great. Like the it's I, I love I love that you know it it's good to stay familiar with the tools we've got we've got minor differences but it sounds like we've got you know like you've polyfilled this so if I if I go in and change this to the React way that'll still work um, but we don't have to we can just write this and that also makes portability good so if we know the caveats like on change then we can I can copy paste in like I have a React component somewhere that looks almost exactly like this because I I use Preact most of the time. And Preact also supports class, so I could I could copy paste components out of my site into this framework, and you know, assuming I'm not using any of the the React hook stuff, it'll just work. It'll just render, and that's that's nice. Yeah, um, and, and Preact actually that that element of Preact was a big influence. I mean, they kept things small because they kept things tight like this, and I have a lot of respect for uh, Jason and all to make those kind of decisions, and it definitely was an influence. Mm hmm. Yeah, I think that's a uh, that, yeah the the work that they're doing on on Preact like you know Jason Miller is is doing amazing work over there on on just like how do you how do you write that much functionality like pure API compatibility with zero JavaScript like unbelievable work over there. Yeah, um, that, that that is a ch that is a challenge. Like we have a lot of the same APIs as React, but, but on the other hand, we're not really going for exact compat. So I from that perspective, I don't. I can do stuff differently. I don't have sure. to worry about mimicking that behavior, right. which, which, yeah, I mean, that's a challenge because React, um, especially the new stuff, there's a reason it's big. It's it's complicated and they are doing a lot of really powerful stuff. Again, not for a learn solid JS session. Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm pretty outspoken, uh, um, especially in the community about how frameworks work. I do a lot of teaching in terms of like the internals. I, I, have, I have a stream that I do and I don't, again, I don't, I don't think it's for all audiences, but um, it, it it's definitely uh, one of those things where like I have other framework developers and people working on like libraries going oh wow I, I watched your stream to learn about like other frameworks mm. even though you're talking about solid but yeah well I mean and that's you know, that's a good point so I'm I'm dropping your Twitter so that anybody who wants to to get in on that can follow you for for announcements when you go live um, yeah. okay so we've got well, JSX makes sense I'm on board uh, hot hot reloading works well enough that I'm happy. So what, what next? What's, uh, what should we start looking at? I think we should create a component. I think maybe a counter or something. I think this will just kind of do that. We can make a new file, make a new folder. We can, we can do whatever we want. You want a structure, but let's, let's go counter JSX. Perfect. Okay. And you can start this the way you might want to start this with react. Um, just kind of think about how you would do that. Um, or wait, I want to, yeah, we can do that, right? Like this is this is okay. Uh, let's do export default. Um, right now, our HMR just works better with it. So I, I, okay. I let's and then uh, yeah, let, for now let's just return whatever. Um, it's just like a div with to do. Yeah, and let's see if we can get that wired into to our component. We might have to save the. Oh no, yeah, you already did save. Sorry. Counter, and then let's drop that in. Uh, let's. Let's drop it. We'll just drop it right below here. Hopefully, 
hopefully that yeah i, I don't think the styling will get in our get in our way um that's the one oh, yeah. uh, it did okay so let me do this then let me let's you know what let's just let's declare bankruptcy we'll uh And then I'll get rid of the logo and we won't use the styles. Boom. We're at a we're at a, a stock web page here. <laughs> there we go. Okay, cool. Yeah. So as you can see, you can just import your, your counter component. Um, let's go into the counter and do some stuff now. Now okay. um, I guess the first thing you want to know is like, how do we manage state? I guess I, I think I think mm -hmm. that's probably the first thing. So we want to yeah. So our... if I if I like pseudocode this right, I've got yeah. a button that would be like add, yeah, remove, and then we need a a total count. So we'll do like a current count is, and this would be our number, yeah. right? So we need to make that live. Yeah. Okay. Perfect. So the first thing you're going to want to do then is you're going to import uh, something called create signal from SolidJS. And signal is our primitive. Um, it is, it is a, it's, it's it's our equivalent to use state, but it is basically a, a reactive um, atom. It is the thing that we we listen to. It's the it's kind of drives our whole app. And okay. to use it. Um, you go uh, const tuple uh, count set count. It, write it like use state equals create signal. Okay, so there is one big difference here. Okay, is that count is not the value. Count is a function. So it's a getter instead of the value. That that is the biggest difference. Uh, okay, so right I off. wouldn't. I don't write it like this. I write it like this. Exactly. Okay. Yes. And All right. we, sh yeah. And from there, um, we can actually write this the same way you'd use React. Everything else is okay. pretty much the same as React. So we can write our click handler. Um, and so that would be set count, count plus function. one. Yeah. Or you can use, you can also use, yeah. Let's just do it like that. You can use the functional form too. We have the like the recur the like recursive like arrow you know don't worry about it. let's just do this <laughs> okay um so we've got one and then we've got a remover function yep. and so that'll do a minus and then yep. down here i would just do an on click yeah and i'm gonna add my i can type add and then we'll take this whole thing yeah change it out for remove okay nothing yeah. exploded Wow. Okay. All right. Yeah. Look at that go. Yeah. And, and there's, there's nothing really fancy here, at least on, at a glance. Um, as I said, this is, this is pretty much similar to how you do react. I mean, there's a few differences. Um, and maybe, I don't know, sh sh are, are, are we comfortable yet enough for me to sh maybe show what some of those differences are? Um, yeah. Why not? This Let's is, Let's do it. I, I think I think I've been kind of like this is this is most people when they write component write code. This is the thing you're gonna do. You're not gonna you're not gonna worry about too much else. You just kind of write your code. You, it's create signal to the use state, but it's it's kind of very similar. But I want to show you something inside your component body somewhere below remove or something. Write console log like something like I I, I don't really whatever like hello whatever you know just something just so that so we'd be able to see this. And and then let's let's look at our console in 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 here if we can, um, and yeah we see some hot reloading stuff going on but you see that hello yes. maybe cl maybe clear the console for a second and ref I guess when you refresh the page you're still going to get that yeah just yeah okay so hello okay. now click the now click the buttons interesting okay so this is the first thing that you're going to notice that is different between solid and a lot of other frameworks components only run once mm. um and you might be going what how is this possible and if if i mean i could show you the compiled code but maybe that's a little bit too technical the, the gist of it is it's because we transform our jsx differently um each instead of components updating it's 
it's where it's where things are used that it's updating. So you can picture that there is just a little function wrapper around that current count is, and that's the only part of the whole app that's re-rendering. Like essentially that little uh, paragraph element yeah. is, is the only part that is rerunning uh, of our of all our code here. Interesting. Um, okay, so so uh, Chris asked a question a minute ago, which was, does this does Solid have a way to to just ignore this middle section of DOM in the app? And I think what you're saying is that that's that's just how it works. Yes. Yeah. Interesting. That's okay. So that's where the performance is coming from. Then is that you're you're not having to go through the whole DOM. You're literally just attaching a, a tiny bit of transformation based on me saying I'm so I'm using the reactive data here. So yeah. these pieces will have reactive stuff, but like this div, that's that won't ever be changed. That's completely ignored. Yeah. And the thing is, oh. it, it, it's it's we you, let, let's just I, I'm going to show you a second primitive here that okay. uh, that isn't necessary and necessary, but just to kind of cement this in. Can you import create effect from, from solid as well? And this is just, if you've seen use effect and react, you might think it's very similar. Let's wrap our console log in, in, in create effect. Um, because this is, this should, I'm hoping we'll give you a better idea of what's going on. Um, right now, when we do this, you're still only going to see the hello once. Um, mm -hmm because there's nothing reactive in that effect. It's just hello, but can we go hello and then go comma count or plus count or whatever, however you want to do it. Um, okay. Yeah. And again, call it as a function. But now when we do this and you press the button, it does you the will, thing. And, and the reason is it's only this effect function that's rerunning. It, that's the only thing that needs to rerun is this one little function here. Mm -hmm. And all you have to do to picture how solid works is picture that we looked at the JSX and we just made a couple create effects in there, essentially. Mm -hmm. Like, and instead of console.log, we're just doing uh, element dot text or something. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right. You okay, you you have my attention because this is this is exactly the kind of stuff that I think is is fascinating. Because a lot of times what I'm worried about is that when I make a decision to go with a, a JavaScript framework, I always feel like I'm over indexing on JavaScript because what I need is for this button, like I have, this is the button. That's the thing that needs to be interactive. The rest of this is text that I wrote to explain why the button's important. And yeah. if I'm like forcing the browser to re-render all that text every time I click the button, I always feel like, oh man, I wish I could do this differently. And I love, I love that this is doing it. You know, the, like this, I think Astro is, is got some promise in that same space with only like, like you get a little bit of, of component. Um, this is cool. This is very, very cool stuff that we're seeing. Yeah. And, and yeah, ex exactly. And I, I'm, some people are asking what the difference is with Svelte. We're going to do it piece by piece here. Okay. First thing difference, difference with Svelte in this exact example is, um, Svelte reruns the whole component. To be fair, they organize your code in such a way that there's an update cycle and a create cycle. So it's only the update part. So they would they would kind of, instead of having separate create effects, they'd kind of just pull out those things that can update and then rerun the whole update block at ah. a component level. They do a diff checking. They check if the values changed on each one so they don't mm -hmm. overrun, but it's like a little bit of diff. Solid um, does do that in some places, but generally speaking, it solves a lot like Svelte with a little less diffing. Um, okay. But but generally speaking, uh, yeah, this is just kind of baked in. This is this is all it is. Like as I said, you could look at the source code and see uh, so compile those effects in or whatever, but essentially this is, this is your this is your this is your component. Um, the and the, the the thing, and I want to mention this here is these are DOM elements. These are mm -hmm. actual your JSX. If you went like const div equals div JSX, you would be holding a DOM element. Um, oh. So I don't so, need to get into like the ref system and and stuff like that. 
we use refs because it just works nice with flow. You don't want to be putting a bunch of equal signs in the middle of like your, like your JSX. Sure. It, 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 refs are still useful, but refs are also very simple in this model because you don't need a special printer. You don't need like a crate ref because essentially it can just be assigned to a variable. You can just be like okay. let ref and then you go ref equals whatever. And it'll just get assigned because okay. there's, it doesn't rerun again. There's, you know, when you get to trouble react is when you have to use ref for something other than a DOM element. And because you start going, Oh, is this stateful? Is this a ref? And then you have to kind of like work through what's an actual stateful change that should drive the component and what's a mutable change that we need to keep it persist between executions. And, you know, then you're like, what's that value inside that closure and all that stuff. I mean, I, I think you just encapsulated in one sentence, what people find confusing about react is that we're and you know, I'm saying this as someone who writes React code just about every day. Like I, I love React. I use it all the time. So this isn't this isn't a bash. This is just a state. React has multiple layers of abstraction, and you have to hold them all in your head to be able to do some more complicated things. When because statefulness is one abstraction, JSX is an abstraction, refs are another abstraction, and then underneath all of that is the VDOM as well. So you you're like, okay, so if if I was in JavaScript, I would do document like query selector div, and then I would just change its cut its text. But if I'm in react, I can't do that. So I have to use a ref, but then I have to get like the ref current element. Like you just get all these things that are like, you can do it, but you can, you start to see how people feel like it's really removed from, from like the, the use the platform statement, right? Like that's a. Right. And the thing is like, and I'm also a huge fan of react. So you can tell from the APIs and the stuff that we do here, but the thing is this reactive model, Mm -hmm. does have this simplification it right. does the component runs once so you, there there are no like there's no stale closures because like like you you, you don't have to worry about a world outside mm -hmm. of the hooks like it just like it, it is what it is and the um so the, i mean that's 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 a that's a big part of it and this is to be fair solid's not the only framework that benefits from this simpler mindset around reactivity uh and execution model view setup mm -hmm. function is kind of like the top of this thing um Svelte, Svelte executes the same. So my argument is the the one of the cool things about Svelte isn't necessarily the how should I put it the the less syntax and whatever looks like JavaScript. It's actually just the fact that you just write the statements and then they just run and they do it. And in offense, this is more verbose, yes, mm -hmm. but it is also just write the statements and they do it. Um, right. The, the big benefit I, I like to think about Solid. One of them is that how transparent this is. Like when people actually look at what the template is they're just like oh it's just like literally what i would have written by hand like oh clone these dom nodes create effect set some text mm -hmm. like, th that's actually what we compile to um mm -hmm. but um yeah I, okay the other thing i want to show you which might mind bend people's can you take that create count we're just doing this as an exercise the problem is most examples that show the difference of solid are kind of contrived but if you take the create signal call the count and the set count there Mm -hmm. Can you pull it out of the component and just put it above, like just a line above? Like, like, let, yeah, perfect. Okay. Let's, let's re, let's see, save our file. Okay. Let's run it. But uh, wow. Okay. So that's something that looking at this, my, my mind says yes. And my heart says no because it feels so out of my experience because, because like you said, the component doesn't re-render every time. So I don't need this. I don't need this to be part of the component because it's not being rerun. Yeah. And, and that's the thing. Oh. React, reactivity has nothing to do with components, components, my components here, you know, solid components are just functions. They are literally nothing. Mm -hmm. They have no instances. They have nothing. There's no overhead. This is why solid scales. I've, I've shown this. The classic problem with reactive libraries is that they have these like wrappers, like observers wrapping components. So the more components you get, the heavier the thing is. It's like it's like a forced right. form of memo memoization. So like a VDOM is relatively cheap on creation because it just like spits out these um, non-polymorphic like very monomorphic structures i'm oh, sorry a little technical but just and just kind of is a is an efficiently made machine reactive systems <laughs> you just said poly uh, non-monomorphic and i was like uh-huh like i had any idea what you were talking about <laughs> sorry but yeah sorry but it, it, it's like this efficient machine that's kind of designed to to do this this one thing 
And yeah. reactive systems add this kind of memoization so that they're really good on update. They, they section parts off, but they're kind of expensive on creation because they have to do that. And the right. kind of philosophy with solid is that the components shouldn't be the boundaries. It's the control flow, like where, like there's an if statement or a for loop or something. That's where we should be breaking stuff for performance. If you add oh, extra okay. boundaries in, you're just adding extra overhead. So I often like to say, because this is not VDOM, but I'm a big fan of VDOMs. So when people come and say, you know, the VDOM is pure overhead, I go, well, your reactive framework is pure overhead too. Um, like this, this is this is a very different sort of take. And right. And the, the key thing here is solids signals are just reactive atoms. They have nothing to do with this. Uh, there is a tree that uh, uh, in terms of uh, our like effects that get removed and stuff. So you mm -hmm. can't necessarily just like throw effects out everywhere. But generally speaking, our state, like if you want to make a store or something or, you know, you just like stick signal in a file and import it. Like it has that kind of simplicity as felt, except it's the same primitives everywhere. You don't need state management because it, it, the whole library is state management. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Uh, so. Good question from the chat. Robin is asking if you have two counter components, would they share state right now? Yes. Yes. Exactly. Like I, oh, I'm okay. not. I, I'm not suggesting that you necessarily. Yeah. It became a store. Yes. <laughs> Essentially. There you go. You created a store by wasting. Wait, though, because that's incredible too. Is, is that like? So if I want to share state, I just have to move it outside of the the component and I and I'm done. I don't have to write any kind of like wrapper components or or state management. I'm just like, hey, here's here's state. It's used everywhere and just keep it. Oh my god. Yeah. I feel like I feel like things are things are changing in my world as we speak. By uh, my whole worldview is shifting. Yeah, I mean, a lot of times we focus on the performance. And I'm not gonna lie, that's where I started, but um, I that's not where I started. I started with Knockout JS, and Knockout JS was actually this. It was just not as refined. Mm -hmm. um, but then I focused a whole bunch on performance because everyone's like, the VDOM is so performant. I'm like, I'm not sure that's true. Like, it is. It can be performant, but it's not okay. like an, an innately like because this is slow and this is not slow. The truth of the matter is everything is fast. If you go on like a benchmark with like JS framework benchmark, you're going to see that right now solid. Is not the fastest framework. Uh, there's a couple that have, like inch it out a little bit into some smaller, you yeah. know, things, toys people playing with. But right next to Solid, right now beside it, same performance, everything is a VDOM library. So I'm just just straight up put there, VDOM not innately slow. There are implications on how you write your applications though, and I think right. that our model is actually really nice. I, I think it, it we kind of get the full power of reactivity here, right? Mm -hmm. People kind of look and they see React and they see the syntax. It's hard to explain this sometimes, but once you once you see it and give it a chance, you start to understand this a bit. This is also why Solid has specific syntax. We didn't do mm -hmm. the compiler game because we I, this primitive portability is 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 it is it you know there's this philosophy behind this right that all our primitives are hook like like we've been doing this primitive game as I said in Knockout. It this far predates React hooks. Um, and the, and, and even our views are just these, the components chunk them up, but even just the fact that, you know, like a div is a div just makes it very easy to have all these little pieces that you can compose. And one of the funniest things that I mentioned last week was I realized people really like to build on top of this kind of primitive thing to the point that, um, while we're still early in our ecosystem days, we don't have a bunch of like component libraries. I, I think a solid bootstrap came out yesterday, which I'm pretty stoked about, oh, nice. but but generally speaking, there's more projects right now that people compile salt like from some DSL they like. Like some people are like, oh, I like it. Look, I like this. It looks like Svelte, and they compile it to Solid. There's more projects like that than the than there are actual component libraries because it's so easy to take a base set of primitives and then and just generate the code you need. So you get the leverage that size. You get the leverage that performance. It's just like a layer. I'm I'm wondering oh, yeah. personally, personally if syntax. You know, I. I I love the work that bigger frameworks, you know, like Vue, I mean, Svelte to a degree now, it's, it's getting to become one of the bigger frameworks, um, have been putting in in the community and the people churning through, figuring out the best DX patterns and all mm -hmm. that stuff. Because realistically, um, I mean, if, if, if there's good patterns merge, we can just copy it. Like, like I, I, I told you, I, I unapologetically copy thing because what I have here with Solid is just very powerful primitives, very powerful tools you know, to base represent whatever you want. 
It, yeah, and I think that you're you're touching on something that I am very happy about, which is it it felt like there was a, a period, say five years ago, where we were furiously presenting new frameworks. And there were there were always new frameworks and, and we all got tired, right? Like there was JavaScript fatigue. We we had to name it, right? <laughs> and and uh but then it, it sort of felt like we consolidated and there were there were only a very small handful of options and and that was the way that we did things and that helped i think it swung the pendulum toward let's solidify what dx is so instead of how can we do this it was how can we do this in a way that like feels natural to people and that people will actually do instead of having to learn all the the bells and whistles of how it works but i think the pendulum's swinging back a little bit and we're seeing more frameworks are emerging. People are rethinking, you know, what, what did React get right? What could React improve on? What did Vue get right? What could Vue pr improve on? And I, I like seeing this innovation in the space because it means that now people are going to be presenting ideas that not only will be able to, will be able to borrow the best ideas from Vue and Svelte and React, but also Vue and Svelte and React will borrow the best ideas from these new frameworks. And so it, it feels like this is a, a sort of renaissance of like, okay, we found we found a good pattern with React and Vue and Svelte. People like the way that they build apps using these frameworks. What could be better? Let's let's improve. Let's iterate, and then you know we'll we'll diverge a little bit, and then I'm sure we'll converge again in another few years and have a small set of like new and improved, or or just like, hey, React took all the best ideas from these other frameworks, and we still use React, or something else will emerge, and React will. Will go the way of of backbone, but um, it's it's really really cool to see this innovation happening again because it felt like it had slowed down for a while. The funny thing is, I always felt that slowdown was just some narrative that people on the which which is fine. I, I get it. People were tired. I wasn't tired. That this those years were when I did the majority of my work. Like I just did it off the radar. I honestly thought no one would like what I'm doing. I this is, <laughs> this is before React hooks. You got to um, sure. I, yeah. I was doing this stuff, and people would see it and be like, "How do you do this without class life cycles? Like, what what are, what are you talking about? Like, you can't do this. You're, you're this must be just a toy. Like, like." And they didn't understand what we're doing here. And I'm like, "No, no, no. This this is this is an older approach. This is like 2010 mm. time period." And the thing is. There is so much going on, especially on the server rendering side. And you brought up Astro before. And this is an area that I'm like, very invested in, in terms of uh, looking yeah. at uh, patterns and stuff. And as it probably goes outside of the like, beginner topics, but there, there is a lot of stuff. And a, a lot of what I've been doing with Solid are... The, as I said, it's just at a different stage in the phase where React ecosystem is at the next JS remix level. Like now we're building the meta frameworks, we're building these tools that make things really easy and powerful. Mm -hmm. Solid is at the like early adopter stage. It's when people come in and go, okay, we're, we're completely shaking up the fundamentals, like mm -hmm. completely. And in a lot of cases, it, you can't port that into those other libraries. They already have an expected behavior. Like, mm. like I know, like for, for example, like React will never be like this. Never, ever, 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 ever will be like this. I don't usually say never, but for React, I can say this will never ever be like this. But, but like you know, Svelte being a compiler, I, I love compilers. They they have a little bit more range. They can go, right. okay, well, we could change what the output is as long as we don't change the language semantics. And 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 that. I think I think that's interesting, and as I said, I, I also do work on compiler. Marco is a compiler, so I think there's a lot of interesting growth. So yes, I do see this thing. I think right now, though, we are definitely at a phase where people are starting to come out of the woodwork to see um, uh, th that you know innovation happening because th that's, sure. it's a natural natural cycle. You when you go yeah. and you start pushing the meta frameworks, people go, oh, that my next JX app that does my blog site is 120 kilobytes. Why can't it be? eight kilobytes. Why can't it be zero kilobytes? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and that, that's, that's a thing. And uh, I said, uh, solid um, is very much, at least on the single page app side of things is kind of innovating the patterns there, uh, similar to Svelte, you know, that's kind of our zone, but as I said, there's great things on the multi-page side, Marco, uh, Astro. So yeah, really interesting time to be in, in web dev. Yeah. I, I love, and, and Brittany put it well, you know, it's it, the, all of these tools, they're not enemies. They're just Everybody's trying stuff and borrowing ideas and pushing to to make the web better. And I yeah, think that's I a that's such a good way to put it. I don't I don't know when it became the Highlander. Like I always make that joke and maybe it shows my age a little bit, but like it's like there can be only one. It's like it was not like that. I, I, I'm a bit older, uh, you know, as I mentioned, uh, I, I actually cut my teeth on web dev, like in the first wave, like 95 period. I was like 12 year old kid, like making websites. Um, <laughs> so like, 
I, I watched the cycle happen. I, I, I built, you know, this simple JavaScript. And then I, I, I was in there for .NET, PHP, Java, the whole fun thing. And when I found Knockout JS and, you know, and jQuery to some degree, but Knockout, I felt like, wow, I'm back here again, back to that simple JavaScript thing and, mm. you know, library over framework kind of mentality. And, and we just go through these cycles over and over and over again. It, like in early 2012, 13, pre-React, pre-fatigue, no one assumed that there would be only one. Somehow that that's just been the dialogue for the last five years. Like we, we have to like find the one framework. It just I, I've it, seen, there's a, a phrase that I hear that um, I like VCs apply this to, to, platforms and stuff, but I feel like it applies more generally, which is that life is just the slow cycle of bundling and unbundling things. Like we, you know, we, we say like, well, we need more options. And so we, we see the option spread and then we go, this is too many options. And so we consolidate and then we go, oh, I'm too restricted. I need options. And then we, we spread. So I think it's, you know, we saw that with like cable to Netflix and now like everybody's bundling their, their services so that you will put all of your, your, content subscriptions under one bundle and pay one price. It's like, oh, so cable. <laughs> uh, and, and I think, but it's, it is still slightly better than cable. Um, so it's, it's this iterative process. And I think that that's how this works is same thing. We, we felt like we were too restricted when everything was jQuery. So we exploded out into tons and tons of options and everybody felt like that's too much. I can't handle it. We need to consolidate. And then we all kind of converged on what we considered to be the leading frameworks. And then we're like, I'm too restricted by this. We need more options. And so here we are now again, kind of reiterating on, on how this could be, uh, which I'm, I'm vastly oversimplifying, but I think that it's, I, I think that that is a, it's a normal cycle that I've seen everywhere in, in and out of web dev. Uh, and I'm, ex I'm excited to be in the exploration phase. I always like it when we're, when as a, as a culture, we kind of go, okay, it's time. Let's get weird. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. No, this, this, this is great. Why do you think this doesn't get more attention, Ryan? Honestly, it, there's a lot of people and developers on the world. I don't think I can get the word out en enough. Uh, I, I, I'm, it's, it shows like this is where, where people can actually watch and people are that you, you're, you're going to do that. And honestly, I, I didn't try to get attention initially. And uh, I think a lot of people do just see this, see react and go, Oh, it's faster, smaller react. So what? I'd like to think that this is actually going to improve people's lives, like the developers' lives, like they actually improve the way they approach the problems. Because the thing that hasn't been said here is where's that dependency array? Have you seen the dependency array yet? Where's the dependency array on that create effect? And 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 where and where why use callback, use ref? Where where are these things? They, mm. they, they just don't need to exist. Mm. Um, and and that's that's a thing of React. And don't and don't don't get me wrong. Like I don't I, I like React. And and then similarly like you know, felt, you know, the store, it's like, where's the stealth store? There isn't a stealth store. It's just the same signal. Like, I think there's ways that this, this, you know, the way we just hoisted it out, I, I think there's ways and powerful things that we can do here um, that go beyond like the normal selling points. This has been really hard actually to sell this to people. I don't like comparing solid to other frameworks, but it kind of is where the conversation goes because people sure. go and they, they see it. And, and then I'm like, it's all really great. It's reactive and it's fine grain, it's performant and it's all these great things. And then they're like, yeah, so how's it not react? I'm like, well, because it does this. And then how's it not like, I basically uh, I'm pushed into that dialogue. I just don't like, I, I, I don't feel comfortable. Like I, I, I'm fine that you use, choose to use react over solid. It makes sense. Like the, the huge ecosystem or whatever. Like I, yeah. I'm not, I'm not going to push you on it. I don't, I don't want to be too aggressive. Uh, I, 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 I will say one of the things that, that I find uh, most frustrating about some dialogue now is that it, I, I feel people show their, I guess, lack, maybe lack of pragmatism when they think that one tool can solve all problems. Like, I think that there's a, there is a, a, a point of call it whatever you want, j being jaded, gaining wisdom experience but where you just kind of realize that, you know, each tool is built to solve a certain subset of problems. And if you, if you expect that you can like take, you know, you pick up a hammer and you go, okay, great. I'm going to, I'm going to like drill in this, this supporting bolt here. It's like, well, that's not what that's for. Like you might be able to solve that problem, but you're not going to do it in a way that's going to be 
particularly ergonomic or, or like easy to understand or easy to reproduce. And, and there's a reason that when you look at a toolbox, it's not just one tool. It's lots of tools for, for different use cases and solutions. Um, oh, thank you for the, for the subs, everybody. I appreciate it. Oh, now we got a hype train. Here we go. Um, but the, the, the fun, like for me, I guess I'm, I've started to notice that the more senior a developer is the less likely they are to say like tool X is bad and tool Y is good. And you should always use tool Y. It's, it's more of a discussion of here are the trade-offs of X, here are the trade-offs of Y based on what problem you're trying to solve make the trade-offs in your head and say, you know, I am better served by this set of trade-offs than this one. Yeah, like mo most definitely. And I think it's cool when we get to convergence points where tools can uh, stride out of their comfort range or actually become very good in that area. But right now there, there are at least a few different categories of things that I think people should be looking at different things. So for example, the divide between sites and apps uh, is still real. I, mm -hmm. As much as I would like to say that we're moving towards something in the middle where we can like, like, and you kind of can sort of pull it out. When you have a really small framework like Svelte or Solid, you can build sites good enough. But right. like, but but then there's tools like Astro and Marco, which is just like you should be using that for sites. It's just, it's the it's a tool built for that, right? Yeah. Eventually, this converges. But the thing is, there's yeah, it's it's always trade offs. Um, should should we? I'm trying to think of it, should, should we should write we, some code? Yeah, we probably yeah, yeah. should write. So I I have a I have a question, and you can tell me if you'd rather show off something else. But I I was thinking we started talking a little bit about stores and shared state and stuff like that. So what if I want to build a another component that uses this state and kind of derives a value from it? So you know maybe maybe a limit thing like if it's if the count's under five, it says one thing. Between five and ten, another thing. Over ten. Something else. Um, uh, is there yeah. something you'd rather show than than kind of how to do that that sort of connected component thing? Yeah, I mean that's that's not bad. Uh, the thing is, we do also have a, a context API, but again, it's it's, it's the same as React's context API. Okay. It does help with with that, but it, for a simple example like that, we wouldn't need to showcase that because you you really and I don't think anyone needs that baggage for this. Okay. The other options were. We look at doing an API request from some public API, like uh, like Swappy or something, like like yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's no, let's do that. Let's uh, let's let's pull some data. Um, I so I have a, I I built an API specifically so we'd have something easy to grab. So I have um a schedule API that we can hit that'll just pull episode beautiful. JSON. Beautiful. So um okay, so let's I'm gonna create another component, and this component is going to be called schedule. And inside of it, I'm going to export default function schedule. And this is going to return a div and we'll we'll make that a to-do. Uh, and up here, I want to pull in this, this thing. So let me save that and then okay. we'll come out here and uh, let's just include it real quick. Beautiful. So Solid has a built-in primitive for this because we want to be able to handle things like suspense. And while we don't need suspense to do this example, I just I, I think we'll just start with that parent primitive. So the first thing you're mm -hmm. going to want to do here is go import uh, create resource from uh, SolidJS. Create re create resource. Okay. And then uh, essentially, um, all we have to do is. Uh, how should we do this? Yeah. So um, let's let's just stub out the 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 uh, the hook, so to speak. So const uh, like yeah, let's do const square bracket. Um, <laughs> I like that Cassidy waited right until we were gonna do code to flood the screen. <laughs> okay, so I I'm creating a resource here. <laughs> so uh, basically, just uh, what do we, what is this? Is schedule. Oh, so let's we need to add code. yeah. So schedule. And then equals like get out of the array um, equals create resource. And what this does is basically takes an async function. Um, it, it, it can be uh, it's a function that returns a promise. So um, we can just yeah whatever we want to do here. Okay. So so we 
um, we're gonna, we're probably just going to use fetch on this. Like as I said, we don't actually have it doesn't. We don't care what the the promise is. We just need uh we just need the a way of fetching from the API. So okay, I, so, so I can let's just, just like return fetch. Yeah, uh, and then we'll put this in there. And that doesn't need any arguments, so we can then just do like a res JSON. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so that's there's our our resource. Yeah, and now it, I mean the, the most simplistic thing you can do right now is in to do just just literally just put schedule in there. Oh, oh. A, a call is a function. Oh right, right, right. It's a function. Right. Obviously, we need to format it or something, but like. Uh, so yeah, I mean, Jason, yeah. Okay. okay. So, so, I mean, this, this, this is the basic thing. Um, does this API have any, uh, IDs or something? I mean, this, yeah, this, we've got, we've got IDs here. We can also iterate over this. Is this a list? We can also lit, mm -hmm. iterate over this list. Let's iterate over the list. Yeah. Um, so solid uses, um, I mean, you could use map, um, but map uh, is a map function. And if you know anything about a map function, when it runs, it runs to completion. It's the same reason why you sometimes use a for loop with an early exit rather than use for each. So solid has its own primitive to deal okay. with, with the loop. So we, we have something called a for component. So like capital F four. Um, and since you're in JavaScript, you don't have to import this. If it's TypeScript, you need to import it for TypeScript. You can just, yeah, just, just, make it and go four and then it looks the, like it, e it already grabbed it for me okay there you go e each is the name of the attribute equals and then schedule function exactly and then our function takes a render prop essentially so you you'll you can uh a render prop or a uh like no, one no. of these no you don't have to do render sorry I, I i didn't mean literally uh sorry it just uh the children's a function uh got it so you, got it so you can so so what, curly, what do we get in cur, cur, curly braces um inside the for each like okay. no like inside the sorry the four like uh like there like yeah and then f uh item arrow function or whatever or ah i understand okay yep i'm with you i'm with you so then i yeah. can do one of these and i can do like an item dot what is it title yeah. title let's let's start there and see if we can get this to to print out didn't break it. I thought I broke it. I didn't break it. Here we go. Right. As I said, you could use a map function, but if we were sorting the list or moving the list or sure. doing anything, then uh, then it would remake a bunch of DOM elements because map has to rerun the whole map. Buckets. Did that just work? <laughs> yeah. And the, <laughs> the other piece here is this is automatically keyed just for information. If people care, this is this is actually keyed to the data. So if we were swapping stuff, the four component is basically adds the keys for you automatically. Um, so oh, you don't. Oh, that's really nice. So I, I mean, th th that's just a basic data fetching. Now, if we had like an ID or something, like if we want to drive this off state, like let's say you wanted to grab like like you had like a input or or URL and you want to like drive it off like. ID one, ID two, ID three. I don't know if that's something we can do here. Um, we can also have the resource um, basically, it, it's very similar to React query, the create resource API. So it's possible to uh, to essentially um, pass a first function in where okay. you say, where you say like, pass the query to the fetcher, so to speak. What we just did is made a version where that's just the fetcher, but you can also pass the query to the fetcher. Um, if that makes sense sense um i don't know if we should go there or not but yeah i mean there we i mean we just loaded some data there, there wasn't yeah so we we've got some data here and um and so you you brought up something that i am interested in which is uh if i wanted to show like a sub page for this and you know maybe we could do this either like in state like if i have uh if i put the slug here <laughs> We could also pull like, in so we could all, I guess we could also pull in solid app router. I don't know either, either, or we, we've um, got about call it 20 minutes. Um, so whatever, whatever you want to show off, I'm, I, okay. We, yeah. Um, I mean, are you familiar with Re Re react router six at all? In enough that I like read their migration guide. <laughs> 
Okay. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. I, I'm trying to think if we want to go that way, uh, cause we could just pull it in and just add a route, but we could also, um, as you said, we could handle and stay, but it's a little bit more complicated. We so actually, there's some questions about just the querying in the fetcher, which uh, honestly, I, I also only sort of understand what you mean. So maybe what we could do is, is mess with this data a little bit. Like yeah. what, for one example is, uh, I only pass the slug. So maybe we could generate the URL, um, so that we can actually like link these. Is that a thing that we would do in the in the fetcher, or how does how does that work? Uh, generate the URL so we can link these. So um, like these, if you go to learnwithjason.dev and then put in this link, um, that doesn't come out of the URL actually. Only the slug comes out of the the API. So if we wanted to generate it, we would need to like prepend the the web like the URL to the the slug. Um, is that like is that the use case for the query in the fetcher, or, or am I misunderstanding what it's for? It's it's so like if you had like a list of things and mm -hmm. you had and you wanted to query get me the first one or the second one, so you could pass in an ID and you gotcha. wanted to drive drive that by state. So you, like um, like oh, if you okay, I, I'm talking I'm, ta I'm just like right now we're just fetching something and it whenever the component mounts it just fetches this. But I'm saying this is the list view. If you had the uh -huh. details view. How would you sh how would you make the details view work? Essentially, is what I, what I'm saying. Okay. You can, pa you can pass in like basically the argument, like a, a simple way of doing this. Do you do you have a way to query by slug, like, um, or or does it just like there's no like parameters? Like, can you go schedule slash ID or schedule? That is a wonderful question. Let me let me find out if this does what I I don't know if I built that. Let's see. I did. Ha -ha! <laughs> so I have I have an API to pull data for a, a given episode. Right. So we just we just need to know the slug. So what we can do is we can make an array of you know of some slugs or something, mm -hmm. and then just like uh, or like a drop down or something, and then and then essentially based on the state of the dropdown switching uh, or the or the input or whatever we can we can basically pull the specific data for it so instead of a yeah we do an option and then the val whoops then i need a whoops get out of here what are you doing value can be the item slug current and we can put this here and so this is not going to be Perfect, but now we've got a drop down, and each of these is going to have its slug as its value. Right. So we can and do a query based off that. Exactly. So I guess we could make a second resource that that drove. I mean, usually, yeah. I mean, it's funny because I think it's the same data, but let's pretend that yeah we fetch less on the on the list, and then we more fetch more in the details. Yeah. Let's we, assume I wrote an efficient API. Then, <laughs> Then we could just create another resource here for like the specific uh, um, one, and then essentially take that and stick that in there instead, and then put the wild card into the yeah exactly replace that with like a slug or something. Okay, like this. Or uh, no, use a like JavaScript dollar sign. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Like that, and then. Assume that the slug is getting passed into the async function here. Okay. And then, okay, we need some states. So let's go, let's go create, let's add a create signal somewhere in here as well. Okay. And put it up there. Uh, we'll do slug, set slug. Exactly. And we're going to want to tie. Or I guess we can start it with like false or something so that it's. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And then we want to tie this to uh, um, a, a change handler on the select element, right? Or uh, yes, in, we or do. So uh, handle select, and that's going to be an event. And then I want to uh, set slug to be event target value. Okay. Yeah. Assuming we got our values right. Okay. And then. Beyond that, all we need to do is okay. Uh, wire it up. So to create resource, pass slug as the first argument in front of the async function. Uh, to that, to that one, yeah. Like this. 
yeah, slug comma, yeah, perfect. Um, and then finally, we need to display our episode um, below our select list. Yes. Okay. So get, uh, fragment. Yeah, fragment. Yeah. I mean, yeah. And then we'll get a do like a section, and then inside this section, we want the the title, and that's gonna be enough. We're gonna we're just gonna put the title in. Okay. Um, so that means we need to be able to pull this oh, need, data, which is going to be the episode. We still need, yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, do so that first. Do I, like, it would, how would you, would you do it like episode title or is there a convention for doing it differently? That's fine, that's fine. Okay. And then uh, what else are you going to say? Oh yeah, we need to add the uh, change handler to the select element. Yes, so is that just like an on change? Sure, uh, this one I think is fine to be on change. Okay. <laughs> Because it, it blur event on a select it should be fine. Okay, and would you do it a different way? Like what? So if for, if for people who get tripped up by this because it's handled differently in React, like what is the right? Would it be on key press or something? Oh, on input. On input. On input. That seems right. That seems fine. That seems yeah. good. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, on input elements, if you want to get the keystroke, that's how you do it. Yeah, with okay. the native. So if I want to do like an if slug so like if slug what's okay the right? uh, i should do this th differently there's a i mean sure i mean you can do this if you want uh solid handles ternary is perfectly fine we also have a show component but you know what let's just do the ternary let's just do it uh and the only thing is slug the function that's right slugs the function Done. yeah okay and so this theoretically speaking should start by showing us nothing yeah it does now i'm going to choose one and it should query it, and I must have screwed something up. Yes, I did. And the thing that I screwed up is reading title of 32, okay. I'm assuming is... Oh, yes, uh, because there's a time period in which the slug is set and the episode hasn't hasn't loaded yet. Because... Uh, ah, right, because we got our new suspense now. Yeah, I mean, but uh, we can... <laughs> What time is it? <laughs> <laughs> um, but how about instead of slug, just make it episode. Um, that might be the easiest thing. Um, like there, just make that episode. Okay. And now let's see. Hey. Yeah. Look at it go. Right. I mean, and we and yeah. we could make this better, right? Like I could do. Something like uh, like that. Yeah, and if and if you're gonna do this, I, I'm gonna say, why don't you just make that the show component? Okay. And so, I do that like show. Yeah, and then it's when episode is a function. Yeah. Episode. And then just yeah, just stick the children in, and then uh, for the. Uh, for the for the other thing, it's uh, fallback. Uh, so on the on the show component, go fallback equals, and then drop the loading in. Actually, yeah, we this is actually going to be great. Um, sorry, I just realized because so this now this will work, mm -hmm. um, or it should work. It does okay, and then now if you just change the show to suspense. Uh, oh, actually, no, don't change the show with suspense. Sorry, wrap, uh, wrap the show with the suspense. Okay. And then... Did that come in? It did? Yeah. Okay. And then move the fallback up to the, to the suspense off the show. Okay. Move the fallback up to there. Now move that onto the suspense. This should... Wow! work because the resource automatically registers with suspense and does all I that. Just, I think I just timed out my own database. There it is. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, it did come in, it just delayed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Too many requests coming in on the free tier of AWS or something. <laughs> this is uh, slick. Like this is really, really nice to to work with where we I mean we've got like Pretty straightforward stuff going on here. This the, none of this looks wild to me. I know how to use the fetch API, so I understand that. Um, this is this is cool. 
This is very cool. Yeah, I, 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 I'm hoping that just these are a few core primitives we build in and then you can do mm -hmm. so much with them, right? Obviously, um, this is the basis of other stuff. As I said, uh, maybe when we finish up Solid Start, um, uh, kind of uh, come on again and show you that. We're, we're building our own meta framework similar to Svelte Kits, similar to... to um, Oh, nice. uh, uh, remix. So it has nested routing. It has all uh, those things. And I've, I've, I've put a few demos up like Hacker News demos. You might've seen those kind of floating around Twitter. I did a Vercel edge function one. I also deployed one to Netlify and it's all the same demo uh, using this kind of starter kit um, that, that we're working on. But uh, you know, uh, it has all, you know, the uh, file-based routing and all the, the more advanced features. But I, I think the key part here for today is just, with a few simple primitives, um, you could do so much, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so there's a question about uh, what what happens to a fetch like this on SSR. Yeah, so uh, it depends on what you want to do. Like, if this is just a pure SSR function, when you do something like this, it's going to try and fetch that from. It depends. Well, it depends on the mode. But if okay. if you do if you're doing async rendering. Mm -hmm. um, Okay, yeah, let's just start there. It's just going to fetch it on the server while it's rendering, and then it'll wait till the end automatically, suspense boundaries all fill out, and then it'll ship the final page with everything in place. Um, if you're doing streaming, it's a little different. It'll actually stream the placeholder over onto the page, so you'll see the loading state in the browser, uh -huh. and then when the server finishes the request, it will then stream in the rest of it and then insert it into the page. Um, so basically with SSR, what you get generally is for these requests that happen on initialization, they'll happen on the server instead of in the browser. Um, and in that way, um, you get more performance because you don't have to wait for the page to uh, like come back, request the JavaScript, come back, right. request the server, come back. There's like three inherent waterfalls. and. Async is pretty good because then you can just wait for everything and then ship it. But streaming is even nicer because you start streaming the, head, the the page, the part of the page that's ready. You start bringing in the images that are already available. You start bringing in the resources. You start loading everything ahead of time. Streaming uh, is is it's the in my opinion it's the, it's the best thing coming to server side rendering and single page apps. Like multi page apps have different things like partial hydration other techniques to reduce JavaScript, but on a pure performance thing, streaming is a big deal. It's coming in React 18, uh, which will make React, I believe, the third framework to support this. Um, uh, 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 but uh, we have it in Solid. Uh, we've had it for a um, couple of years now. And Mark, this is Marco's thing. Uh, Marco's had streaming uh, SSR since 2014. Um, it's 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 a big it's it's, it's a big deal um, because. Like it, it, for dynamic rendering, non-static stuff, this lets you not block your page loading, load stuff immediately on the server, and basically get the best of all worlds. If your network is fast, then you're like you're you're going to see those loading states, and it's going to feel like it's instant. Especially if it's on the edge. Like you get on the edge, you just get the static stuff almost immediately, and then the dynamic stuff just flows in. Like this basically is a good argument for why you know with the cloud and edge. Uh, maybe SSG doesn't need to be pushed as far. Like streaming is the key there. I, like it's not, yeah. it's not just it's not just the proximity of the edge. It's right. like literally you can respond immediately with the static stuff while the dynamic stuff is coming in, sure. and and then on on the. Uh, 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 sorry, I, I, and if your network's slow, if you have bad internet connection, streaming is going to look a lot like. Uh, wait to render async because by the time everything loads up, well, the request on the server is already long done. So your, your page just loads and it's just there and ready for you. So yeah. you, the whole spectrum, streaming basically improves the performance across the whole, whole spectrum if your data latency is high. If your data latency is quick, then maybe it's no different than async rendering, like wait to the end, the traditional stuff you find in Next.js, Spellkit, or whatever. But mm -hmm. but 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 if your data latency is higher, streaming is a huge benefit. And if you think about it, closer to the end user customer, you what you hopefully have is faster network and maybe slightly slower data latency because you're farther from the data center. It, basically, the edge is built for streaming. Um, right, right, right. No, that makes sense. I I get it. That um that's exciting. And and you know, this is 
I feel like this is a space that we're seeing a lot of the platforms are are exploring and moving toward and and you know I think there's a there's there's a lot of high potential there. Um, okay, so with that, we got about five minutes left. I while you were explaining streaming, I I did a, a just a quick little bit of of CSS to to honestly just to see how how well that worked and and surprise it worked really well. Um, you just define your thing and then you do your thing and then if you inspect the thing it does a, a custom class so that you don't end up with with app collisions which is just so dang cool yeah the, the, thank Veet for this i'm i'm no css expert but it's really nice that this is built in like solid mm -hmm. doesn't solid doesn't have like the built-in template stuff but I, I i but there's so many css and js libraries v vanilla mm -hmm. extract or style components scuber emotion like endless list uh, some of the ones that are jsx based we have to do like a custom wrapper for but things that are like most of the css solutions are just plugged in the same way uh that react is so something like css mm -hmm. modules here just just works really qu quite easily and quite nicely and in terms of hmr uh the css is actually pretty good compared to, to, to the components. I'm pretty sure that, uh, that just hot reloads like nothing. Um, right. So. Yeah, no, this is slick. This is really, really nice. It, uh, it feels good to use. And, you know, so, so we've been able to build out like pretty decent number of, of features here. We've got, you know, some stateful stuff. We've got some async stuff. We, we got suspense up and running in a, in like zero minutes, which is always a lot of fun. Um, what in anything else that you want to show in like four minutes? Oh man, I think any other topic would, okay. would get too big. Like, I, I mean, so the here's, is, here's yeah. what we can do instead. Then let's uh, let's take the time and and start looking at a few ongoing resources. Also, chat if you have questions, drop them now because we're running out of time here. So uh, we know we've got. The getting started on on solidjs.com where else would you send somebody if they want to to dig in and go further with solid the, t the tutorial section honestly this is one of my favorite things we again shamelessly stole this from svelte there's 40 40 plus tutorials here uh, explaining every feature in solid just click that drop down and you will see that there is a uh... ton this is this is the felt thing all over again it's mm -hmm. it, it there's an example there's a solve um play with the playground this this is the we're working on making this more beginner friendly and that's what the kids can start it for but if you're if you're kind of experienced in web development at least and and you know have at least a, some bearing of some of the topics or features like you've seen another javascript framework before this this is like the get, this is the go quick guide like you you'll just go okay this is how you do this and solve this is how you do it i i look i use this to look up pretty much all the time when i look at svelte or other frameworks and this is this mm -hmm. is our this is our rosetta stone um so yeah this is this is great uh we got a question in the chat anthony's asking you know we we talked a little bit about trade-offs early he's asking it very pointedly what is solid js bad at where what are the shortcomings we always hear what new frameworks and technologies uh, do well, uh, but we we don't talk about what we lose. So, Cliff's um, notes version: Is there any like standout like big trade offs that you're making? Um, let's see here. I, I already said, said like things that are innately diffing. We actually even have data diffing capabilities. So like stuff like snapshots, like those terrible benchmarks that spam the screen and stuff. Solid's actually pretty pretty fast at. Um, so I, I get. I think the biggest thing is. It's just not compatible with React. It just like like this is a this is a big trade off um, mm. because you, you just can't leverage that current ecosystem at all, uh, and it probably never will. Uh, it, it's it's it just works that differently. Um, uh, but and I mentioned I think HMR is a very difficult challenge, but I, mm. I'm not usually thwarted by those. Uh, Solid has concurrent rendering, which people would also consider a difficult challenge without a VDOM. Mm. So and we have you know uh, you know. SSR hydration, the whole thing, like th those are difficult challenges when you don't have a virtual representation. So I think they're solvable. So I, I think, uh, you know, mostly just incompatibility. I, this is kind of like starting from square one again. And, uh, mm -hmm. you know, not, not everyone's ready to do that. So it's, it's a little more of a, you know, you're, you're going to find yourself in unexplored territory if you start adopting solid JS, because a, a lot of what React has well paved where you can just go to node and find a library that does what you want. In SolidJS, that that work hasn't been done, so you'll be one of the people paving that that path. 
uh, yeah. by, by going and doing that exploration. So that is, I would say that could be a downside for some people because, you know, the, the plug and play is not there. But it's a huge upside for people who feel like everything that could have been invented for React always does. And you can't go out there and contribute to open source because everything's into the, the ultra nuanced like tuning phase. Solid is that the, hey, we need, we need a, like a baseline primitive for this common UI feature. You can go out there and be the author of that library. That's a that's a, a cool space to be in if you're looking to get into open source. Yeah, and we actually have a project for that called Solid Primitives, um, and uh, this is kind of run by our community manager uh, David. And it's it's literally got a ton of different primitives you can can use, and we're accepting PRs, and it goes through a whole process of approval and trying stuff. So we're cr collecting quite a large set, as you can imagine. Solid being based off these simple primitives is a lot like, uh, you know, React use or I forget if Vue has one too. We're basically building up this collection, but this is this is still early days in terms of that. So definitely check out Solid Primitives um, mm. for that. Um, someone actually mentioned about destructuring. Okay, there, we didn't talk about this in here. Um, because Solid is reactive, uh, where you access the data actually matters. So okay. destruct, destructuring props uh, loses reactivity. I don't consider this like a downside. It's just like a, it's like our one hook rule. Like if, if like it, basically if, 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 if in most uh, things, you know, like there's all those hook rules, like in terms of like stale closures or got to be in order top level that solo doesn't have those hook rules. Um, but we have the, the one rule is don't uh, access uh, reactive properties outside of where they're used. Otherwise they won't track. So destructuring props is basically off the table. That's just the, the, we didn't hit it today, but yeah, don't destructure props. Then you'll be good. That's that's our one hook rule. Um, nice. That was our that was our trade off. Cool. Okay. All right. That makes sense. Um, why? Oh, what does the community look like? Yeah, I mean, go to the Discord. We ha I think we probably have to about two thousand members on the Discord as of today. Last night there was a Hacker News post randomly, and uh, essentially uh, we we. Um, got a whole, whole influx of new people. There's always people working on projects. We have uh, component libraries being worked on. Uh, as I mentioned, Solid Bootstrap came out. Someone's working on solid carbon components, uh, solid headless, mm -hmm. uh, headless UI. There's just a base, a bunch of projects that are all in like the 50, 60% range that I, I just know in the next couple months are just going to come out. Um, the ecosystem is growing really rapidly since the release. So um, we have six members on the core team bunch of contributors, a lot of active members in that Discord. So come come, come on by, check it out. The links and everything are right off the top of the salt site. I see you're doing the Netlify deploy. This sh hopefully should be... I mean, it's an SPA, so it should it should be pretty yeah. straightforward. Yeah, yeah. Forward. yeah. Um, yeah. And, and unfortunately, the way our templates are, I don't have the, the link up straight up for the Netlify deploy, although uh, Charlie Gerard did a great uh, starter template that's pre-made, set up for Netlify. You just go there, click the button, and you're, you're good to go. Um, I don't have that link on me offhand, but uh, great, 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 uh, great, solid uh, starter for people who want to deploy to Netlify. Um, Let's see, was it the restaurant one or was it something it, else? It might have been the restaurant one because I think at the bottom she there's like uh, yeah. Deploy to Netfly and. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, so yes. we'll make sure that shows up in the show notes for anybody who wants to learn. And with that, yeah. I think we are going to call this one a success. So the site is deployed. You can go see the, the source code on GitHub. You can look at the site deployed at uh, letslearnsolidjs.netlify.app. Um, we've got a whole host of, of resources. And make sure that you go and follow Ryan again, because there are lots and lots of things to learn by, by watching. Just like, honestly, just eavesdropping on Ryan's Twitter conversations is very informative. So... Uh, we have had live captioning on this show like we do on all shows. We've had Amanda from White Coat Captioning here with us all day. Thank you, Amanda, for being here. And that is made possible through the support of our sponsors, Netlify, Fauna, and Auth0, all kicking in to help make this show more accessible to more people. While you're checking out things on the site, make sure you go and look at the schedule. We got all sorts of good stuff coming up. This week is a big week. This is stream number two. We've got two more. So we're going to talk about design systems with George Gomez on uh, on on December 2nd. That's Thursday. We're going to build your own design system. That is going to be really cool. I got a peek at Backlight Dev. It's very, very interesting. We're going to talk to Natalia Vendito about uh, distributed databases. So we're going to be looking at MongoDB, 
how to do that in a serverless capacity. Lots and lots of fun stuff going on there. And then it just keeps getting better. We're going to do passwordless auth and UI review and automation. And I just, I'm going to stop reading because I'm going to get all these wrong, but you, yeah, go and check this out for sure. It's amazing. You can always add Google calendar here. Um, and you can, you can find on Twitch. Uh, this is where we stream. So make sure you mark that calendar with that. Ryan, any, any final words for everybody? <laughs> I don't know. I, thanks for watching. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We are going to go find somebody to raid. Stay tuned. Ryan, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. We will see you all next time.